All right, you guys, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. My name is Eddie Watson, and my whole goal in creating this YouTube channel was to try and give you guys the confidence to succeed in the ICU by taking these complex critical care subjects and really breaking them down and making them easy to understand. I hope that I'm able to do just that for you guys, and if I am and you'd be interested in getting more critical care content such as this video here, then I do invite you to subscribe to the channel down below. Make sure you hit that bell icon and select all notifications though, that way you'll never miss out when I release a new lesson. All right, you guys, so I'm very excited. I am doing something new. I just got a website up and going, and so I'm trying something new out here. Now, after you watch this lesson, make sure you head on over to icuadvantage.com or go to the link in the lesson description and test your learning by taking a quiz on the information covered here, and you'll be entered into a chance for some gift card giveaways. Now, in this lesson here, I am going to do a quick flyby on two different additional algorithms that the American Heart Association has recommendations for. Knowing these, along with all the other AHA recommendations and algorithms, will really help to round out your systematic approaches to common medical emergencies that you're going to encounter working in the ICU. So let's begin by talking about ACS and stroke algorithms. So this will be a pretty quick review of these two algorithms. While certainly important in their own right, a lot of the algorithm is based around pre-hospital initiation. Now much of this information is applicable to the inpatient setting and certainly is applied within the hospital environment. Now the first one that we're going to talk about is our acute coronary syndrome or our ACS algorithm. So the first step in this algorithm is the recognition of someone exhibiting signs and symptoms that might suggest that they are having an MI. Now these signs and symptoms are going to include things like chest pressure, fullness, squeezing, or pain that really last for several minutes, chest discomfort that spreads to the shoulders, neck, arm, or jaw, discomfort that spreads to the back or between their shoulder blades, if they have discomfort with either dizziness, lightheadedness, nausea, vomiting, sweating, or fainting, or sudden shortness of breath with or without chest discomfort. Now on the ACS algorithm, the next step that they move into is really related to EMS and pre-hospital setting. So please refer to the AHA guidelines, which I am going to link down in the lesson description. Uh, but everything in there is actually included in the next step that I'm going to talk about here. Now, next are the steps for ED assessment and management, or in the case of inpatient, what we would be doing for our patient. So to start off, there are three things that need to be done immediately. We need to get a 12-lead ECG. We need to obtain a set of vitals and really be prepared for CPR and defibrillation if needed. And so this means get your code cart, have it ready. Uh, probably also isn't going to hurt to throw some pads on your patient. Now, based on our vitals, if our O2 sats are less than 90, then we do want to start oxygen at 4 liters and then titrate that as necessary. And then the third thing is that we want to give them the following medications. Aspirin, 160 to 325 milligrams. Nitroglycerin, sublingual. And morphine IV if their chest pain is not relieved by the nitro. Now, next are the things that you want to be doing concurrently. So they can come after the first three, but we really should have these done within the first 10 minutes. And these are going to be things like ensuring that you have a good working IV access. You want to attempt to perform a quick history and assessment. We do also want to review over the checklist for giving fibrinolytic and checking for any contraindications that the patient might have. Then we want to get blood for lab samples, and these are going to be checking our cardiac markers, electrolytes, and coags. And then finally, we want to get a stat chest x-ray. Now, this most likely is not going to happen within those 10 minutes, so they do recommend that this is completed within 30. Now, from here, the algorithm branches and gets a little complicated based on the read of the ECG and what is happening at various points. But the first branch that I'm going to talk about is going to be when our patient has ST elevation or a new left bundle branch block, and this is going to be our STEMI. Now in this case here, you're going to want to immediately start adjunctive therapies such as heparin, nitroglycerin, and beta blockers. And then from here, we need reperfusion therapy stat. And so this is probably going to mean cath lab in most facilities, but could be fibrinolytic therapy as well. 
Now we ask the question if they've had symptoms less than 12 hours. This is most likely going to be the case for our patients in the hospital. Uh, if so, then for our reperfusion therapy, we have a couple of goals. If they're going to cath lab, we expect to have the time to uh, balloon in cath lab within 90 minutes. Or if we're giving them the fibrinolytic therapy, then our goal is to give that within 30 minutes. Now, if it has been more than 12 hours, then we actually are going to move into the first step of the ST depression branch, which I'm going to talk about now. This ST depression branch, this is going to be our non-STEMI. Now, in this branch, if our patient's troponins are elevated or we do consider them to be high risk and they have any of the following conditions, uh, these would be things like continued chest discomfort, uh, either continued or recurrent ST depression, unstable hemodynamics, or signs of heart failure. If so, we do want to consider early invasive strategies. Then from here, we do want to start the adjunctive therapies, and these are going to be things like nitroglycerin, heparin, etc. So now let's move on and talk about the third branch, which is going to be if they have a normal ST segment. Now, the AHA algorithm addresses the emergency department presentation, and at this point, they would consider possible admission. Now, given that our patients are already admitted, we do want to continue to monitor them and really be prepared for further intervention if needed. Now, if either ST elevation or ST depression were to develop at this point, then we do want to move into those respective branches. And that is essentially our ACS. So now let's move on and talk about our acute stroke algorithm. Now, once again, just like with the ACS, the first step here is going to be in the identification of the signs and symptoms that somebody is possibly having a stroke. Now, these signs may be subtle. So remember our acronym FAST. F is for face, and this is going to be facial droop, weakness, or numbness. A is for arm, and again, we're talking weakness or numbness. S is for speech, and this is going to be sudden confusion, slurred or difficult speech, or if they're having difficulty understanding. And then the T is our time to act. So if your facility has a stroke alert, now is the time to call it. Now other signs of a possible acute stroke could be things like trouble seeing in either one or both of their eyes, trouble walking, dizziness or loss of balance and coordination or sudden severe headache with no known cause. Now, again, the next step is important EMS and pre-hospital interventions, which for the purpose of this algorithm uh, in the hospital will be included in our next step here. And so for us, the next step is going to involve our assessment and stabilization of the patient, and all of this really should occur within 10 minutes. We're going to want to assess and support their ABCs and vitals. If they're hypoxic, give them oxygen. Again, ensure that you have good working IV access, and you do want to draw labs. Here we're looking for our CBC, coags, and checking glucose, uh, and do treat that glucose if needed. We also want to do a quick neurological assessment, order an emergency T-scan, and get a 12-lead ECG. Now from here, we want to have an immediate neurological assessment by the stroke team, and we want to have this done within 25 minutes. At this point, we're going to be reviewing the patient's history, uh, establishing a time of onset of symptoms or really the last known time of them being normal. This is really going to be key as we get a little bit further along in the algorithm. And then we also want to perform the NIH stroke scale. This is also going to be something that I am going to cover in a future video. So now it's off to CT and we want to have the results of this CT read no later than 45 minutes from the start of all of this. Now here, we're primarily looking to see if there is hemorrhage, as this is going to determine what our next step is. If the patient does have a hemorrhagic stroke, uh, a neurologist or a neurosurgeon will be consulted, uh, and we do want to consider transferring them to a different facility if that's not available. Now at this point here, you'll begin the stroke or hemorrhagic pathway, and then admit them to either a stroke unit or the ICU if they're not already there, and all of this should happen within the first 60 minutes. Now, if there is no hemorrhage, then we want to consider the use of a fibrinolytic therapy at this point. So we want to evaluate for any contraindications and at this point really assess the patient's neurostatus and see if their symptoms are rapidly improving. From there, we want to ask if they are a candidate for TPA. 
If not, then we're going to want to give them aspirin and then move to the final step of the hemorrhagic branch. If yes, then we're going to want to rapidly review the risk and benefits with either the patient and or the family. And if they accept, then we're going to give them the TPA within 60 minutes from the start of everything. Now, during this time, we're not going to give them any anticoagulants or antiplatelets for at least 24 hours. And then from here, we're going to begin the TPA stroke pathway. And it's going to be really important that we're aggressively monitoring their blood pressure, as well as for any signs of neurological deterioration. And then from here, we want to emergently admit them to a stroke unit or ICU if they are not already there. All right, so that sums up our stroke algorithm, uh, as well as our overall review of the ACS and stroke algorithms. Uh, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this lesson. If you found it useful, please do give me a like down below. It really goes a long way to support this channel in the eyes of the YouTube algorithm, as well as leave me a comment down below. I love reading and responding to each one of your comments out there, uh, and also share this video with other people you think might find it useful. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel down below. And as always, a special shout out to the awesome YouTube and Patreon members out there. I am so appreciative of the support that you guys are willing to show this channel. Uh, for the rest of you guys, if you'd be interested in showing additional support for this channel, you can join the YouTube membership down below or head on over to the Patreon page and check out some of the additional perks that you get for doing just that. You can also support this channel by following some of the links down in the lesson description, as well as checking out some of the awesome shirt designs I have down there as well. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next lesson that I release. Otherwise, check out a couple awesome lessons I'm going to link to right here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.